All right, let's start with the smiles on, huh? All right, so uh, <laughs> welcome everybody. It's my uh, pleasure to have our guest, actually our second guest, pretty big guest for our second one. Very happy. Uh, I'm actually small, brother. Yeah, but you're a big guest. You have big impact. <laughs> like <to say. laughs> Thank you so much. So uh, I think you guys are getting more and more familiar with uh, Abu Musa Wajdi Akari. He's uh, getting more popular by the day, but I guess, dude, like you look very young, but I'm half your age, uh, almost. Mashallah. So uh, <laughs> I know you from YouTube, man. But when I uh, when I check YouTube, I also see some stuff like you're on TV and you're doing this and you're doing that. So you have a big history in Dawa, right? Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, Alhamdulillah, may Allah uh, uh, allow us to, to continue to serve His religion. I don't know, I can't speak about myself uh, and be comfortable when doing so, mm -hmm. uh, but, yeah, but just to be uh, also uh, authentic, uh, yes, I've been in da'wah for over a decade, mm -hmm. Alhamdulillah. Of course, there's a lot of uh, many learning curves in da'wah, you go through uh, a roller coaster. Mm -hmm. And uh, as we all know, as you grow older, you should uh, mature. <laughs> and uh, alhamdulillah, inshallah, we hope that uh, the, the recent analysis of those that are involved in da'wah is that that maturity is coming around. Because some, I have some clips out there on YouTube uh, that people have made without even my consent or permission where they get like this, you know, two minute part of a lecture where I'm, you know, <laughs> I'm really fired up. And then, you know, and it's like usually a very catchy uh, title, like, you know, uh, whatever the title may be. And so a lot of people, the only communication they had with me is like a two minute video of me like going blasting someone or something. And they're like, oh, what's going on with this guy? Um, only the people that have watched my, my all of my lectures uh, or a complete lecture or have heard me discuss multiple topics can understand where I'm coming from. So there's a little bad vibe. Uh, but alhamdulillah rabbil alameen we then made sure that no one uh, uploads anything without any consent first mm -hmm. and since then things have been under control yeah i mean you have this two minute highlight when you're saying some pretty you know you're you're not sure coding it and then people are not bothered to see like the one hour version or the two hour version where you put the whole context in place yeah which is important which, which is, is a big yeah, lesson for all the muslims yes yeah so uh, for yeah. me i know you asked the guy uh, who uh, is very clear with separating the Ahl al-Bid'ah and the people who are, who are not guiding to the Ahl sunnah I know you from being very humorous, having good com comedy, uh, no sugar coating and recently actually, well not recent anymore, I think a few months, the Aqidah lessons, which is, is so nice to have man. If you want to learn Arabic, someone is reading, translating it and even like going over it like this is what's happening right now, pay attention. Oh, I love it man, mm. it's so good. So, Alhamdulillah. Uh, may, Allah may Allah accept. Allah. I'm glad you like it, brother. Zakallah khair. Uh, so I think I'm not going to repeat the whole story. I don't think you are not are not down for that either. But you have a uh, you have some uh, you have quite a bumpy road to uh, towards this, right? And uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> a very bumpy road. <laughs> and uh, yeah, you were in the beginning not practicing. Then you lived the Hollywood life, right? Buddhism. Yes. Rapping. And I, Buddhism. Rapping. Yo, yeah. yo, the whole thing. What was, yeah. the, what was the name of the band again? Scums or something? Scums of the Earth. Oh, <laughs> mm, quite a name. Yeah, quite a name, man. So, uh, uh, so you started practicing more, but actually, you first started praying to make someone else happy. Actually, some the insurance guy, if I remember correctly, and then correct. And then I was you actually yeah. got started started getting closer, right? Sah. It was. It was. Uh, me trying to be nice to my boss who was nice to me and my payback because I couldn't give him money I couldn't you know I couldn't offer him anything I figured it would I, I and I knew that much I knew that if you if you pray and a, another Muslim you know feels like he's the reason behind you praying that is it's a good thing right mm -hmm. you you know a person will be happy that they're they're causing others to obey Allah mm -hmm. and I understood that much back then enough for me to say all right you know let me just pray so I can make this guy happy um, Sadly, not even being concerned about, you know, the creator whom you pray for. Uh, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is merciful that even though the intention was bogus, uh, Ramadan was like that time. Ramadan came shortly after and it was really um, a wake-up call for me uh, to stop being hypocritical and stop bluffing and stop lying 
uh, about you know about the, the the reality that if I continued, I will go to hell, which is something that everybody has to come to terms with, mm -hmm. uh, believers and and disbelievers, um, uh, you know, Muslims and non-Muslims. Everybody has to uh, take some time out and think: if I were to die right now, like what is it going to be like? Do I feel secure? Do I feel that I'm I'm ready? I've I've prepared myself uh, adequately for the questioning, for the grave, for the resurrection. And maybe a lot of us, including good Muslims, will, will be like, mm, not really. I, I think I got a lot of work to do. A lot of coverage. Yeah. And it's that, kind of, yeah, it's that kind of accountability that really puts things into perspective. And imagine back then when I was, you know, Islam was not even on a list of things I do. Mm -hmm. And I'm rapping and I'm doing all types of, you know, bad stuff. Um, it, it hit me so hard. Like, oh my God, if I die, I'm going to hell. And forever. And like, what? Like, what? Like what? For hell forever? Like this is so so scary. Like I don't care. I don't care what I think I am and how cool I thought I was. It was such a devastating thought that it it made me you know begin to change. And and that feeling doesn't go away. It's not like you know you stop practicing and you're like okay I'm I'm straight going to heaven. Woo! Who wants to come with me? Like no, you always have to worry that yeah, you want to yeah. stay on the path. You want to strive. You want to you know. It's an, it's an ongoing battle, as Allah says, Ya ayyuhal insanu, inna ka kadihun ila rabbika kadhan famulaqi. O son of Adam, you will surely strive and struggle towards your Lord until you meet him. If you if you are not so, worrying, that's the problem. If you're not thinking about it, when you feel safe. And that's how, naam, exactly. The Sahaba used to think that if a person feels secure from being a hypocrite, then he is a hypocrite. Yeah. And as long as you're worried that you're not really you know, you're not really safe and, and, and you don't have salvation at hand, then you're, you're pretty much good to go. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. So what, what I found very interesting of your story is also when you actually quit your job to go to the Friday prayers. MashaAllah. It's very uh, nice to hear. Uh, yeah, that, man. Look, I mean, being uh, young, uh, I think, was a, was a good reason. But um, it was... Uh, all, look, all of these things that happened, brother... Um, at the end of the day, it's really tawfiq from Allah. And that's what I want to yeah. remind myself yeah. and the people. Yeah. Like sometimes you think that you've done this calculated move and you figured it out <laughs> and you're so smart. Yeah. But it, in reality, if, if Allah had not decreed things to happen the way they happen, then it you would have just failed. I would have failed. Everybody would have failed. Yeah. But it was the qadr of Allah and the mercy of Allah that allowed me to be in a predicament where I, come, I, I came to know that if you miss three Fridays in a row, without attending Jumu'ah that Allah will put a seal on your heart mm -hmm. after I started practicing. And I was put in a situation where I can no longer go because of my ex-boss. But um, somehow, someway Allah Azza wa Jal made it so that I got fired. And one, after I got fired, I got to go to Jumu'ah, uh, which was, hey, it was great. And so I got to pray and then from, believe it or not, it was like the greatest uh, job I lost <laughs> or the greatest thing that happened to me, losing that job. Because from that moment onwards, when I went back to uh, Los Angeles and that was that was back in Houston, Texas. Mm -hmm. Things really were just getting better and better as time went by. So Alhamdulillah, it was mercy from Allah to get fired. Yeah, I think that's a very important point because it's easy to think like I've done this and then that happened but Qadr Allah bro, it's just a uh, just Qadr. So, um, Absolutely. Yeah man, that's, I love the story. If people who want to know, I recommend you watch it. It has a lot of lessons in it. You also repeat it like I would only tell this if there was some lesson from it. I just don't tell tell it to just have an entertaining talk uh, which I like this obviously one. yeah so one of the things yeah, the title is the helpless slave of Allah let me just so the people can maybe we'll put in the link yeah uh, description but the lecture the full lecture of my story is titled the helpless slave of Allah you could look it up on YouTube and just you'll know what's up yeah so one thing I didn't hear in that lecture and I heard afterwards was um, so this whole thing like uh, are you Ahl Sunnah or Jama'a are you not and uh, so I heard you say a lot of stuff when you I think it was a video where you was like um advising people and uh -huh. some group that you were advising you said like i've been there i've been with those people i know what it's like and then i thought okay mm. i actually didn't hear that part of the story yet like when you're practicing you're trying to get practicing but you're not really following the authentic sunnah yet yes so I, yeah uh-huh yeah, go, go ahead sorry tell me about it just before we go on yeah basically um there, was a, there were many phases of, of coming to Islam. 
Um, and so, and that's some, that's an important uh, reminder for every everybody, whether you're a newly practicing Muslim or a revert to Islam, a new Muslim from another religion. I guess the biggest challenge everybody faces is like, it's not like all the Muslims are the same. And so really wherever you go, whichever masjid you attend, whichever group of people you hang out with, uh, you're basically on the right path. Uh, unfortunately, and uh, one of the miracles uh, of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is that he informed us that this ummah will divide. And that's one of the inevitable things that cannot be avoided. Um, and it's from the wisdom of Allah that this is the case, obviously. Everything happens with the uh, bearing in mind the wisdom of Allah. And so today when there are, we have all these groups, um, you know, you, you, you have to be also selective in terms of you, who you, uh, you know, spend time with, who you learn this religion from. And um, I, I had started learning uh, the deen uh, and learning the, you know, the importance of Allah's, knowing who Allah is, knowing Allah's names, knowing Allah's attributes, the importance of Tawheed, the dangers of shirk. And then I was hanging out with a group of people that were uh, very keen on, on da'wah, uh, but their concept of da'wah was just pray. Uh, all the other matters were minimized, uh, even though the other matters should have been uh, the focus. Uh, just like the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu when he so, sent Mu'adh ibn Jabal uh, to the Christians uh, and the people of the book, he told them, uh, Ya Mu'adh, you're going to come across people from Ahlul Kitab, let the first thing that you call them to is La ilaha illallah. If they obey you, and then tell him that Allah has, you know, uh, commanded them to pray five times a day. If they obey you, then tell them that they have to pay zakah and so on and so forth. So the gradualism was that you begin with tawheed, not salah, mm -hmm. uh, not undermining salah. And so those people were not on that tip. And um, one time during one of their classes, what they call a bayan, a, you know, a brother got up and made it, told us, told the story. The, the gist of the story is that Allah was everywhere. And, and we know that that is not the case because we have uh, ample evidence from the Quran that Allah is above His creation, above the throne. Mm -hmm. and, and those very kind brothers turned really, really vicious on me when I tried to confront him with just textual evidence from the Quran. Yeah. And I was called names and stuff like that. And I mean, um, I mean, what can you do? Uh, we still hope and pray that Allah guides them. But yeah, you, you will face those issues with, with fellow Muslims. Mm -hmm. And so I really advise every person listening to this um, to be uh, patient, be forbearant, and always look uh, for the truth and always ask Allah for guidance. And there's a reason why you recite in every uh, salah, in every rak'ah, Surah Al-Fatiha, and in every uh, Surah Al-Fatiha you say, اِهْدِنَا الصِّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ Guide us to the straight path. Because it's Allah Azza wa Jalla who's going to guide you. Yeah. If you have uh, preconceived notions or if you have preferences that you've already selected, then you're going to get what you asked for. Yeah. So be careful. Yeah. yeah. So I think, yeah, you didn't know you started to learn something about uh, like the actual deen. And then you got curious and you started comparing, you started asking questions. And that's the way you actually got out of it, right? Uh, I, if I understand you correctly, yes. Yeah. So um, do you think like um, some people who are not yet at that phase of the religion where they uh, really try to get knowledge from the authentic sources, um, what do you think is the reason that they are still like uh, doing the stuff that they're doing right now and that they're not like um, going to Ahlul Sunnah, like looking at the authentic text and everything? Why is it why is it still happening? Like if if everyone is everybody should be like that, right? So it should be. Um, yeah. It should be. It should uh, be the, yeah. the key word is sh it should be, but it isn't because uh, look, Achi, if you look at the human behavior. Uh, from a historical point of view and, and, and when I say historical I couldn't care less about history really mm -hmm. to me history is the Quran mm -hmm. uh, so when I want to uh, historize a subject matter I look into what Allah said about the previous nations and Allah told us about the previous nations that they had a common reply uh, to anything that you introduce to them which conflicts with their preferences and that is, inna wajadna abaana ala umma, wa inna ala atharihim muhtadun. Verily, we have found our forefathers following this path as upon this particular way, and verily we shall be behind them and we will follow them. Now, whether that 
uh, that you're following is your forefathers, your community, your culture, your preference. It's going to take on different forms. Mm -hmm. But humans have proven throughout history with every prophet that unless Allah guides them, or unless they want to be guided, they will often choose what they prefer. What is in line with their ahwa? That's why they called ahlul ahwa'i wal bid'a, mm -hmm. the people of desires and innovation. Yeah. It's what you desire, um, and it takes a lot of taqwa. And we're not claiming to be among the muttaqin, and Allah is our witness. We're not claiming to be among the muttaqin, but it takes a lot of taqwa for someone to say, "Look, I like this, and it's cool, but it's not from the religion. I'm going to leave it alone." Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Many people fall for the peer pressure, cultural pressure, social, societal pressure where they want to fit in because you don't want to be the, uh, the uh, renegade or the outcast. You don't want to be the odd one among the people, the stranger. Um, and it's, it's, a, it's an honorable title actually to be a stranger towards the end of time. Mm -hmm. But people prefer just to fit in so that they don't have all this drama. So it takes a person of will and, and resolve and determination to say, you know what, forget y'all. Yeah. It's a matter of, you know, heaven and hell and I'm going to do the right thing and I don't care what my fathers were doing. Yeah. You know, I don't care what it is. Yeah. It's just whatever the sunnah is, I'm there. Yeah, so obviously Allah guides uh, whom, whom He wills. But um, what do you think is the right approach when we're talking about this core issue of having somebody who is actually subconsciously preferring their desires before the scriptural evidence? What is the right way to approach them and advise of such a brother or sister? I mean, the, 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 ni the right way is the nice way. Okay, the fundamentally is the nice way. And people, people have a, a misunderstanding uh, when it comes to da'wah. Uh, they don't take into consideration the platform. Mm -hmm. um, and the Arabs have a beautiful saying that says, لِكُلِّ مَقَامٍ مَقَالٍ um, Every situation necessitates a tailored, customized statement. Um, so when I'm having this uh, talk with you, I don't know if we can really, we call it a podcast nowadays, even though as far as I'm researching, podcast should be some audio uh, discussion of some sort, something you hear on your way to work. But uh, we're calling it podcast nowadays, whatever, loosely. Um, this kind of communication we're having is not identical to me having a discussion with my neighbor uh, about Islam. It's not identical to me having a discussion with a non-Muslim about Islam at work. Um, and so I'm going to change my tone, my approach, my choice of words. Uh, everything will change according to who I'm speaking with. Mm -hmm. So if I, am, if I have access to someone who fits into the category of people you described, then ultimately I'm going to be the nicest person I can be. I'm going to be the nicest person I can be so that I can bring the point home and I can captivate their hearts mm -hmm. and I can have them uh, be, be received from me whatever information, and that message will be Tawheed. Because Tawheed is that only thing, knowing Allah, worshipping Allah, loving Allah above and beyond everything and everyone, is the only way that you will be able to overcome your desires. Because mm -hmm. it, it's going to boil down to, you're going to choose your desires, uh, or you're going to choose Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you're going to choose your desires over Allah, you're, you're crazy. You're just crazy. And if you choose Allah over your desires, uh, congratulations. Uh, that's exactly what it takes for you to be successful. When you give a lecture, however, you, you cannot always, I don't believe that that would be the, the right approach to be the super kind, sweet, uh, loving person. Because sometimes people need some sense to be knocked into them. Some people need a wake up call. So anytime someone contacts me, say, brother, uh, Barakallah feek, um, I'm having waswas uh, from the shaitan. Uh, I'm not sure that if I made wudu, I repeat my wudu. If I'm, you know, pray, I repeat my prayer. Da da da. When a person contacts me, he's expecting from me to be, you know, this this sweetheart. I bash those guys, and it works every time. What do you say? <laughs> I go crazy. I I say, bro, bro, are you gonna let the shaitan play games with you? <laughs> Do you, will you are you, really, you're going to let the shaitan play with you? Oh, yeah, man, go do, no, you didn't pray, oh, come back, oh, jump, go down, Madriash. <laughs> Akhi, stop, man, stop playing games, man. Wake up and stop being a silly human being. Yeah. Wallah, that's not acceptable. Yeah. The, how can you let the shaitan toy with you like this? And then when they hear it, 
they, they always reply, brother, Zakallah khair, Allahu Akbar. That's exactly what I needed to hear, you know? Yeah. And, and that's, that, that's what works. Another brother told me, Akhi, I'm 26 years old. Is it too late for me to learn Islam and, and repent to Allah? And I'm like, bro, what are you talking about? Who said that age, you, re, you know, reach a certain age where you want to repent and someone tells you, sorry, too late. You're 26, you missed the deadline. Now you're going to go to hell. So, Akhi, where do you get these ideas from? Yeah. You can repent when you're 60 years old. And I gave him some story. Again, it was one of those things where he needed someone to be, I'm not going to say aggressive. I try to be funny. I actually crack a couple of jokes so that he doesn't think that I'm, I'm screaming at him. him yeah. At the same time, at the same time, the way I approach it is I leave no room for him to continue to go back and forth and let the shaitan play around with him. Mm -hmm. You know, you got to knit it right in the butt. Yeah. And so sometimes when you give a public talk, I'm going to have a different approach depending on the context. Khutbat al Jum'ah is not like a lecture, it's not like this, it's not like a debate, and so on and so forth. But the bottom line is to answer your question, but such a long answer, I'm so sorry. I love it, I love it. Is, it would be Tawheed. It will be Tawheed. I will make sure that I communicate Tawheed to this person because that is the ultimate source of salvation. Perfect. So you actually touched on a lot of subjects I wanted to talk about. Let's just go back to the, to the thing about you saying, okay, I changed my Dawah for a specific person. So what about YouTube, for example? Uh, how do you approach YouTube when you have literally any guy can watch you? Uh, how do you change your, your tone or your way of uh, giving Dawah? Uh, honestly, YouTube was never on the, on the map for me because when I started giving lectures publicly, um, I wasn't. I don't think I thought about YouTube at all. Mm -hmm. In fact, I didn't even think about recording. It was a it was a, a Filipino brother. Mm -hmm. uh, may Allah bless him and reward the brother Jamil in Tag. Uh, I want to I want to give him a shout out as they say now. Nice. Because he was the he was the innovator, the the the, the good innovator who who said, look, can I record this? I said, knock yourself out, man. And then you know he uploaded on his little channel. I was like, oh, that's cute. And then I took a copy of it and uploaded it and it was, it was like a gradual thing and then Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen it grew and it, it got to the point that it got to. So this entire time I've been given lectures, I wasn't really thinking about YouTube, I'm thinking about my audience because all of those talks were to physical people. So my target was the people that were there, bearing in mind that other people might listen to it, not really sure whether it was going to happen or not. It's really now since the uh, Corona uh, pandemic hit us, that my audience has really become YouTube. Where, I, where right now I'm speaking to you and you're not even here. And uh, you know, I'm just in my, in my living room, I have my family with me. Mm -hmm. But uh, I know that no one is gonna see this unless it's on YouTube. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Or maybe if somebody makes clips on WhatsApp. And so YouTube, uh, that even makes me more careless. Um, in a sense that if I'm going to change in order to please the people, then I might as well shut up, all right? Because YouTube, and we are living in the age of keyboard warriors. <laughs> Everybody's got this keyboard <laughs> going around. Masha Allah. Masha Allah. Everybody is a brave <laughs> macho man yeah. who's ready to beat you up, knock you out, yeah. uh, uh, run you over with the car, as long as they're behind their cute little keyboards that have all these lightings. Didn't and that all affect these, you, you know, like in stuff. the beginning maybe? It always affects me. Uh, but uh, I find them more entertaining than anything. Yeah. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm a savage. May Allah guide me. I'm a savage because the, the greatest thing to me ever is when someone uh, writes like this lengthy essay of a comment yeah. where they're bashing me. And I know they spent a good 30 to 45 minutes writing it. And they're not being respectful. The greatest feeling in the world is to first click on that guy's channel, then go to about then go to the flag and then block user and then go back to my studio and then d remove the comment. And it's so satisfying uh, as, a, as a retaliation yeah. on my part. You want to be a funny guy and you want to run your mouth and you think you got a platform. Thank you for wasting your time. No one cares what you have to say. No one is even going to read it because I didn't. it was pending in the approval. Mm -hmm. It wasn't even approved. I have the choice actually to leave you know, certain comments mm -hmm. with certain words to be pending. Um, and so that's my payback to these funny people that uh, they want to approach things disrespectfully. Look, I'm not saying you don't have to agree with me, but I don't go out there and actually disrespect people in the da'wah. I, I say certain things which may be too difficult for you to digest. No issue. You can also say things to me in, in your comment that are too difficult to me to digest. 
also no issue. I have to be a thick skin. Mm -hmm. As they say, mm -hmm. if you're able to dish it out, you should be able to receive it. But don't come on and start using bad words and bad language and stuff like that and expect that I'm going to get or, or share links of some deviant people mm -hmm. and you expect me to approve that comment. Yeah. So it's a different ball game. Um, and because it's your channel, you get to dictate how things happen. And that's one of the blessings of having your own channel. Yeah, so uh, about upsetting people, like I see a lot of people getting upset in your videos. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Yeah, subhanallah. subhanallah. May Allah remove this uh, feeling that they have. But um, I mean, look, man, uh, the, in very short, uh, uh, a brief expression, the people, can you imagine? Can you imagine when Allah says, Innahum kanu idha qila lahum la ilaha illallah yastakbirun wa yaquluna inna la tariku alihatina li sha'irin majnoon? The, the people back then used to be, when it was said to them, La ilaha illallah, they were so arrogant. And not only they were arrogant, they would reject La ilaha illallah. They would go on to say, do you think we're going to leave our God? Mm -hmm. To a crazy poet. Speaking about the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So when, when people are willing to call a prophet of God, a prophet of Allah, a crazy poet, mm -hmm. and then be so arrogant and belittle La ilaha illallah, what, I mean, what are your expectations? Your expectations should be the same. When you go out and tell the people, this is the aqeedah of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, this is Tawheed, this is Halal, this is Haram, of course you're going to have rejectors. Yeah. And you're going to yeah. have people that have a problem with it. It's, 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 a, it's a, an immediate expected consequence. Mm -hmm. If you get shocked, then maybe you are not ready for da'wah. Because you should know already from the stories of the prophets that people are going to come and call you names. Yeah. And then in return, they're going to reject. Yeah. And you try to give them da'wah as much as possible. After which you say, You cannot guide those who you love. Allah guides whom he wills. And you make du'a for them and you sujood that Allah guides them. Yeah, so it's, uh, I think it's also not a coincidence that, um, I think the, the channels who call out to uh, things that are not called out always, they are small channels, right? And yeah. the big channels, they play it on the safe side, right? Uh, you could say that either they're supported or they have ads or money or I don't know what they're doing. But but yeah, you will find you will hardly ever find a, a person uh, who who is uh, yani calling to the sound Islam uh, to have a huge uh, popularity or a huge following because the condition of the Muslims is not one where they're going to be excited about someone who's mm -hmm. going to make quote unquote their lives difficult. Mm -hmm. They want someone who's going to just basically pat them on the back, say, bravo, you're doing great, yeah. mashallah, tabarakallah, we're all going to Jannah together, let's have a Jannah hug. Yeah. And that, you know, it, it's a nice a little dandy message. They prefer that, and what can we do? Yeah, well, I catch myself doing that as well when I'm YouTube and I'm clicking on videos which I know I want to hear, right? Some people just don't yeah. want to hear something that they don't agree with, so they just don't click on it or just stay away from it. So yeah, it makes, it makes a lot of sense. Also, what I think is a big issue is... Um, when I check the comment section of some of those channels, small, big, whatever, they are so praising and so positive to the point that it's pretty dangerous, man. Like, imagine yourself, I mean, you could probably imagine it, I don't know. If I imagine myself having a channel and then the only thing I'm seeing is positive feedback, compliments, oh, you're doing so good, you're doing such such a big impact for the Ummah, such a nice thing, blah, 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 that it affects you in a very bad way, right? Oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And that's why the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and that's something that the Muslims need to be aware of. He said, yani, whoever praises you in your face, you should throw dirt into his, in, into his face. Whoever praises you, throw dirt into his face because, because no matter who you are, your head is going to get big. Yeah. That's why when yeah. you see the scholars, when you really listen to the scholars, whether uh, Sheikh bin Uthameen, Rahimahullah, or I, I've seen this a, a few times with Sheikh Muhammad Mukhtar al Shanqiti and other, other mashayikh. Uh, when people praise them, they don't even let the guy continue. Yeah, yeah. You know, they, they say, hey, you know, khalas, you know, calm it down and change the subject. They're not, they're not having it. And people don't realize that. So, you know, some celebrity speaker, you know, he does, he writes this post that the people appreciate. And, and it, there's, no wrong, there's nothing wrong with appreciation. So it's the, if you say Zakallahu Khairan, Barakallahu Fiq, this was beneficial. Alhamdulillah, this is not praising. Mm -hmm. The pray, this is just appreciation, which you're supposed to do as a believer. The issue is with Ya Sheikh, 
had it not been for you, you are oh a gem yeah. from Allah and umadri ish, umadri ish, and the person is reading it and his head is getting bigger and bigger and bigger and his head gets so big that when other people start trying to speak to him, his ears are blocked with the size of his head. And they think like, I'm, a good, I'm doing good stuff, you're just a hater, you don't know and... Exactly, exactly. They, yeah. they, they, they think that you got an issue yeah. and you really don't have an issue. Yeah. You just, you, you know better and they know better. Uh, but it's a, it's a big challenge for you to be able to put people in their place and tell them to calm it down and, and keep things under control. It's a challenge, uh, but you know, that's, that's what you learn the religion for. You learn the religion so you can put it into practice, not so that you can say, you know, I, I have, I'm a PhD and uh, Dera Didi and Weedy Weebi and BKBB and all this beautiful stuff and you have your CV, whatever you go, or even if you're going to open a book, you have a, a file of, of the university that used to attend under that Islamic book so that people can still be reminded that you're, you went to that, you know, Western University. Uh, I mean, that's just, uh, even, going, if yeah. <laughs> yeah. even if it's unintentional, even if it's unintentional, if I were in that person's shoes, if I saw that file, I would like, man, put that aside, yeah. man. Aib, yani, aib. Uh, but whatever, assuming good. Regardless, you have so many other incidents where really it's about accumulating uh, uh, credentials and then the end product is mass confusion where you're like uh what's going on am i supposed to second doubt everything i've learned yeah. uh, throughout my life yeah. everything the scholars have been teaching for hundreds of years now we're discovering everything is new discoveries new discoveries about the quran new discoveries about certain books authored by certain uh, uh, uh new discovery about yeah, uh, the, the, everything exactly yeah Jujum, everything is a new discovery oh well, look what we found out yeah. guess what and then the people they're like when you, when you when you criticize the people like not like you have to you have to call it bad right they're like he has done yeah. this he has studied this who are you to say this exactly how do you respond to exactly. something like that when they say you who are you look at yourself uh, you are sinning as well blah 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 I'm like come on dude I don't have a YouTube channel with million yeah. followers right no, exactly. I mean, uh, that, that, you, you have to expect that. You're going to have the cheerleaders yeah. and the fanboys and the fangirls who are going to, uh, you know, defend their, their sheikh at any cost yeah. and at all costs. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that's, that's the problem of, of the ummah being swayed by individuals and not by the truth that the individuals are supposed to represent. Yeah. And, you know, you think about it. Ibn Abbas was studying the people back then. Ibn Abbas became angry when he told the people certain things and they said Abu Bakr and Umar he said he said yushiku an tasquta alaykum hijaratun min as sama uh, stones are about to fall upon you from the sky aqulu lakum qala rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam wa taquluna qala Abu Bakr wa Umar i say to you the prophet sallam said and you telling me Abu Bakr and Umar said mm -hmm. And if you just think about this, and if, if we gave a lecture about this, that which is probably what I'm going to do one day, inshallah, inshallah that would be the, all you need to understand. If Ibn Abbas is studying Sahaba at that time, or in the Tabi'een, that woe to you, you might get destroyed like in you know, Ashabul Fil, because I'm telling you the message of Allah, and you're quoting Abu Bakr and Umar, and that's Abu Bakr and Umar, ya Shaykh. Not, uh, you know, I'm not going to call names right now. Not some Fulan and Allan. Yeah, yeah. Because they're opposing the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah. Uh, and, and Ibn Abbas was, was troubled with, with the people's reaction. What do we say about today? You tell them the Sunnah says, but the Sheikh, the Sheikh said, who's the Sheikh? Is he Abu Bakr level? No. Is he Umar level? No. Then you should also expect stones to fall on you from the sky. Yeah. Well, if somebody starts mentioning their credentials, you know it's, uh, it's already getting dangerous. Um, look, I mean, look, in fairness, there are times akhi, where, where the scholars uh, make exceptions mm -hmm. uh, and they use as an evidence the story of Yusuf alayhi salam. Yeah. Uh, if I uh, mm -hmm. uh, allow me to be in charge of the treasures of the earth, verily I am I'm good at keeping, uh, at, at pre yani preserving and protecting and knowledgeable. Mm -hmm. So there are times where if you're being put or, or your, your capability or your cred, cred, uh, credibility is being questioned, then you are allowed to mention what qualifications you had in that context. Not that every time and any given opportunity you remind everybody what you've done. 
So in case you ever hear someone saying, you know, look, I studied with this sheikh, or I went over here, or I went to this university, don't say, oh, brother, come on, man, no need. No, no, it's okay. So the people can know who they're learning from. Because if you also say, I came out of nowhere, I was just living in a, in a, on a couch the, all these years, and here I am now giving you dawah, you're going to say, time out, buddy. Mm -hmm. I mean, hey, why, why should I take you seriously? Yeah. So there's, there are exceptions to the rule, but yeah, it should be done in moderation and only when necessary, not as a hobby. Yeah. So then yeah. you start noticing that like people, they're, fo they're following a person, not a religion almost, it feels like sometimes. And then this, Sahih. and then th there's some disagreement between two people and it gets almost like American politics, right? They're on that side and other people on the other side. And there, there aren't different people who are like, okay, so his, he has that good, he has that good. So maybe uh, he is right in that, but he's right in the other point. It's just so polarized, like it's just, just a fight between two people. But what I also see is um, debates between uh, two individuals who are both in some way correct or have made a mistake. And they start arguing and making a big issue about that as well. And then the impact it has on the believing people when they see like two Muslim, brother, two Muslim brothers having a debate over something so small and actually extrapolating it, right? Do you understand where I'm going with this? Like the debates and stuff. Well, I mean, the debates that you mean debates that are done and uh, in, in, in like retaliations and refutations, meaning because we're in, <laughs> I'm involved in this, too. So I don't know what I don't know what, what you're referring to specifically. Maybe you should explain. But ultimately, there are times when you have to you got to say what you got to say mm -hmm. when someone uh, obviously small mistakes. This is everybody. Yeah. Everybody's going to make a small mistake. Yeah. Uh, our issue is always the bigger picture mm -hmm. that not everybody sees. Mm -hmm. Uh, and sometimes you have to spell it out for the people, yeah. meaning the people may be deceived by the superficial look and they don't look, they don't have an in-depth understanding of what, uh, what the ramifications of certain opinions are. Mm -hmm. Meaning I can come and tell you right now something that you say, oh, it's not a big deal, it's a small mistake, but actually what, what that mistake, the kind of uh, potential harm it could bring to the Muslims is huge. Yeah. Uh, and, and so sometimes while certain people are looking at it as a, as a tiny little thing, mm -hmm. it's actually a bigger, bigger problem that if you were not to address it early on, uh, then it will be too late at some point. Mm -hmm. Also when I watch, so that is the, the refutation part, I guess, sort of. Um, mm. Also when you watch like YouTube uh, channels with, where the people are debating, and mo a lot of times they're debating with Christians, right? Or no, atheists. But okay. sometimes you see two brothers, Atheist, yeah. like in, for example, speaker corner, debating with each other, and there are non-Muslims like watching this, and they're seeing them get heated up about some issue, maybe which is a good issue to get heated up about, but not in front of the people who are interested in Islam, right? Yeah, that's a ter that's terrible da'wah right there. Yeah. And I think you um, you have and really clearly stated your view about it as well, like watching debates and that whole issue. Now, now, debates, uh, debates are for uh, uh, the elite, uh, they're for uh, qualified people mm -hmm. and they should be done behind closed doors. Mm -hmm. uh, meaning the, the, the debaters mm -hmm. and the attendees should be people of concern. Mm -hmm. A debate should never be a public event where every, uh, you know, uh, Zaid and, and Abid and Abdullah and Tom and Dick and Harry, everybody can attend and it's like you're watching uh, a soap opera of some sort mm -hmm. or, uh, you know, like a boxing match, not boxing, wrestling, whatever you want to call it, uh, where two people are going at each other because, because what they're going to say in the process, if you don't have knowledge to decipher mm -hmm. and, and understand what's being said, you are definitely going to leave with some doubts. Mm -hmm. uh, specifically, if you happen to listen to a deviant, well-articulated, eloquent, uh, a speaker, uh, which is the case, by the way, in most of these debates with the atheists, yeah, yeah. and they're usually people that are very much learned. Um, they they're have high qualifications, high credentials, um, and they've studied philosophy and science and stuff like that. And maybe the Muslim on the opposite end is a miskeen uh, who's uh, excited about you know giving dawah, but he's not at the caliber of the pers person he's speaking with. So even though he the truth is on our side, ultimately, you're unable to deliver it to the masses. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
So you wind up doing a disservice to Islam. Mm -hmm. And that applies in professional university type debates mm -hmm. or even in, in a speaker's corner in Hyde Park, mm -hmm. where again, two Muslims may go at it mm -hmm. and they're trying to prove a certain point. But for the non-Muslims, um, it's a major turnoff. And, and we should be focusing on giving da'wah to them uh, you know, in, in a situation like that. Mm -hmm. As for these two brothers, mm -hmm. go to the coffee shop, Habibi. On me. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll pay. I'll, I'll pay for your coffee. Go have a uh, sitting at the coffee shop and bring your little clan uh, with you. You click, as they say, if you if they're interested in hearing it out, mm -hmm. and and do it privately. You know, in one of the brothers' homes. Don't do it in a public place and record it and confuse half of the ummah over there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's. I totally agree with that. Also. Um... Um, I wanted to mention something else uh, about your, your opinion on, you call them uh, bedtime shuyuk, right? Bedtime story shuyuk. Uh, it's actually maybe one. There are not that many of them, uh, yeah, but there's yeah, one particular so, one. Yeah. So, <laughs> but there are a few out there, but in terms of fame, I think it's only one. Yeah. So one argument somebody could make to you is, well, he is um, he's, he's giving dawah to his target audience. His target audience may not be only Muslims. Uh, it may be people who just needed that part of Dawah more than another group. And I think recently uh, one bedtime sheikh uh, also uh, stated that, that he was doing it something for that part of the community. Uh, so do, do you, should, should we mention his name or just no, you want to no, keep no, it confidential? No. You want to mention okay, it? Okay, good. It doesn't matter to me. You know me. Uh, go ahead. Go ahead. All right, so we're talking, let's be clear, because I've been wanting to make a little video for the oh, brother anyways. Uh, Mufti, yeah, Mufti Meng, Zala Khair. Um, he actually made uh, somebody, he made a little talk, or he gave a little talk and someone shared it with me and they kind of told me, look man, this obviously is like targeting you because start, yeah, I... of some of the things I've said, yeah. Um, I heard it and it's, it's a beautiful speech, Zala Khair. Uh, my response, I wanted to respond to it, is uh, a few things to say. Mm -hmm. The first of which is, um, there is no such thing um, when you are a, a, a student of knowledge uh, or a sheikh or a da'i that you're going to focus on one thing or one audience uh, while ignoring the other matters. I will agree that you can specialize in a certain field, in a certain area. You could be more, uh, you're better qualified, more eloquent. You can invest more into it. No doubt. Each one of us has that. But when you represent Islam, you cannot expect your audience to go and, and pick up the information they should get from you as someone that they trust, which is a very, very critical matter. Mm -hmm. The fact that you're able to build this trust factor with your audience where they have this, they believe that you will guide them to Allah, mm -hmm. it becomes obligatory on you, obligatory on you to disseminate the whole message of Islam. Otherwise, you are betraying, unintentionally, I would say, mm -hmm. inshallah, inshallah, you're betraying the Muslims. You're betraying their trust. Because uh, Allah says, Kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijat lil nas, mm -hmm. bil ma'roof, mm -hmm. wa tanhawna anil munkar, wa tu'minuna billah. You were the best nation ever produced to people. Why? Because you give nice lectures about uh, nice uh, topics? No. Because you enjoy what is good, you forbid what is evil, and you believe in Allah. And enjoying what is good and forbidding what is evil means the whole religion of Islam. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it means that you need to you do the bayan, the clarification and the elaboration and the breakdown of the religion of Islam as something that you owe to the people. If you, if you withhold from the knowledge that Allah gave you, then you become guilty of withholding knowledge that Allah gave you. Mm -hmm, yeah. And the tax for the knowledge you, earn, you learn is that you have to share it with the people. Allah didn't select you to learn this religion yeah. so you can you know, address one aspect of it and ignore the other aspects. You, you didn't learn only one thing in Islam, you learned the whole religion. You need to teach the whole religion. You need to tell the people more about Allah and what they need to believe about Allah, not discuss a, a surah and then conveniently skip the part that addresses the names and attributes of Allah. Mm -hmm. that's, that's actually, there's an amana ilmiya, there's a, a, a trust, a, a knowledge-based trust that is, uh, you're burdened with that you have to fulfill. Um, the brother, uh, Mufti, may Allah bless him, he gave an example of uh, just like 
you know, you learn math from a math teacher and you learn English and you don't expect the English teacher to teach you math and you don't expect so on and so forth. That analogy is what they call Al-Qiyas ma al farid This is an analogy with a major difference where you can no longer make this analogy to begin with. Because mm -hmm. we're not telling you to go learn uh, math from an English teacher. Um, just like we say, we're not telling you to go learn Aqidah from a fiqh teacher, right? Mm -hmm. um, it, it, what we're saying, don't, to say it, to, to try to put it this way is actually not sound. Because if I'm used to use the same line of thinking, then I would say, okay, look man, if your English teacher, if your English teacher knew that by teaching you the uh, table of multiplication, or by teaching you any aspect of math, even though it's not a specialty, but he knows, he should know the basic. By teaching you, he will be saving you from failure. Yeah. Is, it, is it incumbent on him? And do you expect of him, even though he's an English teacher, to do the job of teaching you? Or he should say, Wallah, you figured out on your own. Go find yourself another math teacher. No, he say, look, man, you're supposed to. Yeah. And this is even from an academic, in an academic world. This is religion, ya sheikh. But way bigger. This is, this is religion. So you cannot come and say, Wallah, look, go online. You find a brother dealing with Aqidah, Jazallah khair. Every sheikh is the best sheikh in the world. Everybody is the best uh, scholar in the world. Go learn from him, go learn from him, go learn from him. And then you see the people's comments, they're posting lectures of every deviant person you can imagine. Mm -hmm. Clearly stating and showing that the followers are completely clueless mm -hmm. because he has said in the past that you should listen to everyone and then take the good and leave the bad. Ya yeah, Sheikh, the average Muslim, if he knew how to take the good and leave the bad, he wouldn't be listening to you to begin with. I he would be given it, the uh, talk himself. I will swim, but I won't get wet, right? It, Naam, and I gave a lecture about that way back yeah, there. Yeah. I will swim, but I won't get wet. The people don't know. Yeah. If they knew, they would be teaching, not learning. And so you cannot say as the same as, as you know, even in Islam, you have a fiqh teacher and an aqidah teacher and this type of teacher and that type of teacher. That idea, let me just close this thing because I keep getting reminders. Uh, that type of thing just simply does not apply uh, you as a da'i to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You must tell them everything they need to know that will get them closer to Allah mm -hmm. and everything that will protect them from the hellfire. That necessitates discussing bid'ah, especially in this day and time with all over the place, innovations, uh, grave worship. Uh, people seeking you know, to Allah through uh, intercession and tawassul through other than uh, their good deeds, you know, through dead people. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, that means that you have to discuss people that will mislead your followers from the path of Allah. Mm -hmm. uh, other speakers out there that are doing dangerous work. That means you have to speak about the Shia and you have to... There's a lot of work that has to be done as a trustworthy person. Now, we know that as soon as you do so, you're going to have all these other Muslims say, Hey! Mufti's gone bad now. He's like this other guy, Abu Musab, and like this guy, and like that guy. Oh, we don't want him. Let us find another sheikh who's only going to tell me bedtime stories. Yeah. And they're going to ditch you and go somewhere else. Yeah. Uh, type. So are we you here think, again? You think that are is the reason crowd -pleasing? He's, he's quiet about it? Uh, Allahu A'lam. I mean, uh, based on his words, mm -hmm. that he's trying to cater for a certain group of people, that he has different type of audience, yeah. and so it's in his uh, interest yes. to say things that will, you know, keep the, the herd, if I, if I were to use this word. We say, uh, we, we got a problem. Because now we're becoming crowd pleasers, and we're not fulfilling the amana that is placed on us, specifically for someone who graduated from Medina University, and someone who's bilingual, mm -hmm. and someone who's as handsome as he is, mashallah, and, and nice as well-dressed as he is. Yeah, and he has all the, he has the full package. Yeah, yeah. He has, in my opinion, a much bigger obligation than miskin like me, and so many other du'at out there, who don't look as cute, and are not as nice, and don't dress as fancy, and we don't get, you know, invited to yeah, as many places. Yeah. You have this, you have a platform that we don't even have. Mm -hmm. Akhi, do the job. Yeah. Let us be quiet. Yeah. Yani instead, let us be quiet. You will be doing a, a great favor. But sadly, we see you uh, fulfilling this 7% of Islam that yeah. you do so wonderfully. And you're leaving the 93% for us so we can get all the heat and all the smacking and all the slapping. And then you just keep your, you know, beautiful little world. And we, Akhi, come on, man. That's that. I've never heard of a Sheikh. Sheikh Al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, Ibn Qayyim al Jawziyyah, Imam al Dhahabi. Look at the stuff that they authored and look what they wrote and look how they dealt with it. Every Sheikh in the world became a Sheikh 
because he told the people Islam from A to Z, no. not from A to C. And then, you know, as for every, all the other letters, go fetch for them with, uh, you know, some other guy. And, you know, Alhamdulillah, it's a beautiful world we're living in. Woo! With the Shema. My <laughs> Yijiyah. I think this perfectly connects to uh, your video last, uh, I think, Saturday, Sunday, which stressed me out, by the way, because you were the first 50 minutes, you were like, podcast this, podcast that, it's not good. And I was in discussion with you for the podcast. I was like, what? <laughs> what is going on? Is he going to mention me? Like, I'm talking with a brother and he's doing this and that. Or like, but <laughs> you were talking about nah. those uh, unplanned podcasts, right? Nah, and uh, just so we can clarify to the people, Jazakallah Khair, you've sent me, we've already communicated in advance, you've sent me the questions in advance, uh, you gave me the chance to uh, prepare if, if I had any preparation to do, mm -hmm. um, even though we're discussing things haphazardly, if we both see or if I see that I've said something that, that needs to be removed, I'm going to edit the video yeah. and I'm going to remove a statement which I might have said out of, you know, out of excitement or overzealous, uh, being overzealous and so on and so forth. Um, and not just because we made the video, I'm, I'm lazy, yalla upload it, bismillah, hopefully everybody will enjoy it. La yeah. uh, either We have to do uh, our alignment and homework and then we have to do the pre and post, yeah. post lecture, post podcast. Okay, mm -hmm. listen, man, is this appropriate to say? Is this going to confuse the people? And, and be considerate towards the Muslims. And, the, you know, otherwise, obviously, the podcast becomes a, a disaster as opposed to a, a solution and a means of guidance for the people. Yeah, I mean, there's the reason for the podcast, right? Also, when something happens, people are like racing to get give their, opon uh, their opinion on it, right? And then you have, you have this yeah. kind of podcast where they're like sitting down and it's like, let's talk about this issue, but... They don't, even, they don't even know like if they're on the same page on it. I mean, with you and me, I, yeah. think, I trust that we are on the same page. So it is safe to go a bit off track with the questions. But like when you're doing something like this in response to a big issue, then you need to really need to know what's going to happen. Right? Uh, Sahih, yeah. of course, and the topic makes a big difference. If if we're addressing a to addressing a topic that that we've addressed before, mm -hmm. or maybe we're just reiterating it. Uh, we're trying to maybe give it a new packaging, but it's uh, my dawah, which people know, or let's say you, let's say you're giving dawah the dawah that your people know, mm -hmm. no issue. But if we're discussing something that is fresh and and contemporary, yeah. and the people haven't heard your input on it, so it's the first time you're addressing it, and then there's all this. Haphazardness. لا, yeah. لا. Yeah. And then you also mentioned the, the big people aren't speaking, so the small channels start speaking up. And then you have this thing of why are you speaking? You didn't study with the Sheikh and like the whole thing you said. So this is a big issue. Like they're criticizing the small channels for speaking up, but the big people they are not speaking about uh, particular stuff. And, uh, and just so we can be clear, uh, Akhi, the, the big people, sometimes they don't speak themselves, but they tell those smaller uh, channels, if I want to say, or smaller tulab al-ilm or smaller du'at to speak. And so okay, uh, it, most, of, mo most of the stuff that I've done recently mm -hmm. was after alignment with the most senior of du'at in the English language. Because... I'm not going to consult a, a sheikh from the Arab world uh, uh, in this context mm -hmm. because he may not be familiar. This is an ex example where he's not familiar mm -hmm. with the Western mm -hmm. issue or who's being uh, targeted. You need, to, uh, you need to consult the people that know the da'wah scene in the English language. Yeah. I'm not even going to call it the West. I'm just going to say the English language because yeah. I'm in the East over here this guy speaking in English. And so these consultations happen. And these senior students of knowledge, they know that some of us may be able to articulate uh, the, the topic better or the backlash will be uh, lesser mm -hmm. or, you know, whatever the reasons may be. Uh, I'm not going to blame them for not speaking because also because of their seniority, they shouldn't be really uh, jumping on everything that happens out there. Yeah. Uh, let's just say that they, they have people that can handle this on their behalf, mm -hmm. knowing very well that they can handle it. And if they were to make a mistake, as it happened before, for example, when I did the uh, the first um, video about Tahir White and and the you know the heartbroken video, mm -hmm. um, I mentioned in in the video that. Uh, uh, you know, so before we used to tell the people to listen. Now I'm, you know, I'm going to hold back from from advising the people to listen to you. Uh, one of those senior uh, uh, mashayikh in the English language reached out to me, said, "No, look, I agree with the video. It's all good, but I think that's a little extreme. 
uh, that you go to the point of saying right now whatever he's teaching is also off the uh, off the you know the the, the path mm -hmm. okay the uh, wrong decision in terms of joining yaqeen but in terms of what he teaches we don't have any issue as of now yeah. so fix that and i i edited my video mashallah i didn't know that happened i i, I Yes, it was yeah. in the beginning. It was in the first the video when it yeah. first came out. Yeah. I removed the obvious. You don't know that the video was edited, but I removed it because they uh, they watch, they listen, mm -hmm. and they give us feedback. Uh, so do you so, also think it is a good reason that um, they have to speak up about something, and then they ask the smaller channels to speak up? Do you think there's ever? Do you think there's ever a good reason for it? Yeah, like I said, the good reason could be is that um, if they were to speak about it, mm -hmm. uh, it will create a, a bigger split among the people, uh -huh, yeah. um, and they and they might have they might have bigger objectives and, uh, that they're trying to achieve, depending on their following, depending on their uh, community, mm -hmm. um, and depending on how busy they are. Uh, those brothers are often leaders and imams in their communities and they're, they're, they're dealing with marriage counseling and they're, they're, being, they're invited all over the place to go different places, give talks. Mm -hmm. They can't really be, at, you know, every time something happens, they're going to come on and say something. Uh, and so, yeah, they, that's one good reason. They know others who may have more time for these issues and they know what they're talking about mm -hmm. and they align with them. Uh, they go and handle it. It's all good. Would you just, for our understanding... Um give an example of something that is a good reason to do it on smaller channels and stuff that everybody should be speaking about for example i'm wondering at the moment right uh, wondering at the moment right now about daniel he speaks a lot about a lot of stuff but is that also something that you think is valid for smaller channels to speak about and bigger channels not yeah look Akhi, there are certain things that this is the this is the sad condition that we're in mm -hmm. uh, we've reached a point where you know we are so ultra sensitive uh, that issues that are like play black and white uh, you know style a clear cut wrong mm -hmm. uh, people are waiting for all types of qualifications to address them mm -hmm. uh, you know that's like that's like ex you see uh, if a muslim is walking down the street and he sees another person you know with a bacon sticking out of his mouth and he wants to tell him, hey, they say, hey, don't judge. Have you studied Islam? Oh. <laughs> have you memorized the Quran? <laughs> uh, do, are you qualified? Do you know what is the ayah in the Quran that says that eating uh, pork is haram? Yeah. If you cannot quote the ayah for me, you cannot tell this person to stop eating bacon? The ayah, Shaykh. So, I mean, uh, LGBT, qawm lut. Yani, what do you want? Yani, what world are you living in? What Quran have you been reading? If you don't know what Allah did to qawm lut, yeah. the, the, the most, they, they got the word. Qawm Lut, Jibreel, Jibreel came down with his wing mm -hmm. and he, he, he dug it into the earth mm -hmm. and he took him up in the sky mm -hmm. and turned him upside down and smashed him and then Allah sent even more things upon them. Mm -hmm. Akhi, they got a punishment that you, you can't even begin, begin to understand. Yeah. And you have someone today saying, whoa, 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 rainbow. No, and then you want what qualification? Yeah. Every, any anybody, anybody yeah. can come and speak about it. Of course, at a certain level, it, it you need more qualification, but that is like right in your face. It's not like a fiqhi matter yeah, like that only qualified students of knowledge. Yeah, it's exactly. This is like from the usul and the basics of the deen. And the more small channels and small people speak about it, the more awareness it creates and the more the people will be like, okay, yeah, so these other celebrity scholars that are not, not just, they're not just not warning against it, they're promoting it. If you don't call them out, like right from the beginning, it would be a disaster. And I have a lot of information that I receive from students of knowledge uh, from, from the West, from the States about certain things that are happening that are, I can't even speak about out of, out of respect for the confidentiality. Mm -hmm. But akhi, it's a, it's a terrible agenda that is being done for the Muslims and Yaqeen is at the forefront. And their endorsement is through those people that they're bringing on board to justify and legitimize this long-term agenda where you're starting to see glimpses of it slowly but surely. We're going to reach a point where, where you as a Muslim can no longer say, you know, anything wrong about Qawm Lut or the act of, of, of Qawm mm -hmm. Lut and anything of the sort, you're going to be criminalized and you're going to be held back and they're going to tell you, who are you, you, you uh, bigot, bigot, uh, you know, hater. 
<coughs> you're radical hater because look at this sheikh. Yeah. Look at this imam who speaks in front of the president. He's, he has a compassion and, and love for all these people. And then you're, you're the nothing but a hater. Yeah. Yeah, no, yeah exactly. Yeah. And, and the more you allow them to do this, the worse it's going to be at the, at, at the end. I have uh, one more question, I think, about uh, the Mufti. You recently uh, yeah. had made a video, I think recently, like two months ago. You took it down and you were like, I'm waiting on the development of the, the conversation, right? Yeah, but the reason why, uh, the main reason why I took it down, uh, even though there was no development in the conversation, mm -hmm. we, we, we just... Uh, yeah, I'm paraphrasing, kind of, you probably said something uh, else. I'm not really sure what you said, but... I did say that, okay. no, I did say okay. that. But but the, the reason, the main reason why I took it down... Okay, I took it down because there was a development of the conversation. Okay. The reason why I kept it down is because I came to know that uh, what the brother had done, he was not aware that this was going to go public. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And we respect the privacy of uh, Muslims, whether mm -hmm. du'at or otherwise. If somebody disobeys Allah, let's say I disobey Allah in secret, I do a mistake, I don't want... And you shouldn't want, and no one should want that my private sin goes out to the people, and nor should you be a person promoting it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it's one thing that he answered those questions that he was asked, um, knowing that this will be a public information. It's another thing that he thought this was a private conversation, and then it will never be known to the people. So he thought, okay, maybe I'll get myself out of trouble. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Maybe he thought it's a sin. I, I, I'm committed the lesser of two evils. He might have some justification between him and Allah why this is okay. Even if he thought it was just a sin. Mm -hmm. uh, the worst case scenario, it's, he knew it's a sin. He committed a sin by giving false answers. Clear-cut false answers that are not justifiable in the deen of Allah in any way, shape or form. I'm not going to sugarcoat that. Still, if he did this in private and then it went public, I am not allowed to go and, and uh, air dirty laundry and call him out and make a big fuss out of it also because it's an issue of a, a private matter. It's not that he went on the mimbar mm -hmm. and he said to the people, uh, you know, oh, the same answers he gave her, he said that. On the contrary, when he went and spoke publicly, he said, no, I don't believe this. I don't believe that. He contradicted himself. Mm -hmm. He refuted himself. So what I'm concerned about is that what he's teaching the Muslims is, is what we ex expect him to teach, the sound message in this regard. And what he said to the lady was, Mashiha, like a business just to get out of trouble. Khalas. So that's a private sin. Then my job is to shut my mouth yeah. and no longer publicize it. Mm -hmm. And I took the video down because the video was a little harsh, uh, to be honest with you. I should have kept the Muhammad Sharif part, but khalas, we took down the video. Um, we, we, you know, I took it down because I'm not there for fame. I'm not there to put someone down. Mm -hmm. I was there to highlight how ridiculous we have become in the way we answer or wanna, we want to be politically correct mm -hmm. to the point that we wind up selling our religion for a cheap cost. Mm -hmm. But anyways, uh, we took it down because we don't want to deal with any responsibility with before Allah on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. And we hope that the, the, the Mufti will make some, some positive changes uh, accordingly, which is what we were hoping for. Yeah. So, uh, f you, you actually said that uh, there will be a video of him uh, explaining the situation. Uh, did that happen? Uh, he said, I don't know if he did. I don't follow him, honestly. I don't know if he ever made a video where he explained it. And it's irrelevant to me right now. It's just a close case for you right I now. It's a close case because it's a private sin, so that video, inshallah, is never going to see the light again. Even if he doesn't change, even if whatever, unless he, unless he one day starts preaching to the people what he said in the video. Yeah. Then it will be, uh, I'll put the video back up. But that's not, I don't, inshallah, that's it's, not going to happen. Therefore, right that now. video is, huh? It's unlisted, yeah. then delete it. It's un exactly, exactly. So that video right now is, is yeah. obsolete as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, yeah. Um, and whether he, we still have an issue with Mufti Menk in a sense that we just discussed him earlier. So I still don't, and it's not like I told people you can go listen to him now. Mm -hmm. We're back to square one, really, mm -hmm. um, as if this never happened. We still hope that he will make that change, not regarding the video. The video, khalas, it's in yeah. the past and he made a mistake. We want his da'wah to change so that he tells the people in his kind way, in his nice way, in his gentle way. But he tells them everything that they need to hear uh, as their math teacher, science teacher, the like geography teacher. as the ult Yeah, exactly. Teach him the whole thing because that's what a sheikh does. So I thought uh, when you, uh, your big criticism was on recent issues that he didn't speak about. But you were also talking more about the knowledge of the deen, like the whole thing that is permanent always, not only recent development. A lot, 
a lot of stuff. And from what I heard of him uh, addressing different, uh, the, he, he selects certain topics, primarily hard softeners and stuff like that. And, and mawa'idh, you know, what is known as mawa'idha, which is beautiful, akhi. Mm -hmm. But then uh, there's a lot more to Islam than that. Mm -hmm. There is a lot more to Islam than that. And the more knowledgeable you are, mm -hmm. the bigger the obligation that you have. And you just have to fulfill it. Please Allah. Uh, uh, and whether the people like it or not, that's their problem. Okay. Very interesting. Yeah, we're going all over the place. Uh, I had one more question. It's totally unrelated. Good, good. Let's just go for it. Uh, some, Yalla. Something I found very interesting about you is... Uh, I have your. I got your phone number. I can add you on Facebook. You are quite known, I think. Uh, I think in on YouTube, I think you're categorized as like a mid channel, or are you still a small channel? I don't know how to. I don't know how to character. I don't know how many. I, I think we have some 40, 43,000 subscribers. I don't know where that falls yeah. in terms of popularity. Nor do I care. Yeah. And that's why anybody, any anybody can can access me anywhere in the yeah. world. People add me on Facebook, they chat with me, people get my phone number, yeah. they talk to me. Because I've never seen myself and I don't see myself as a, a special person in this regard in any yeah, way, shape or form. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm a Muslim, yeah. I have fellow Muslims, mm -hmm. I, Allah gave me, let's say, a, a, a certain gift mm -hmm. that I'm able to, uh, you know, maybe communicate, or articulate the message to people in a, in a way that they understand it. Mm -hmm. I can maybe s simplify things more so than maybe others. Uh, that's at least the feedback I've received. And if I have that gift, then, then I'm, not, I'm not supposed to just go to bed with it and then wake up with it. And then the people are still out there looking for someone to be there yeah, for them. Yeah. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm very much uh, accessible and reachable. Yeah. yeah, because that's what, of course, within reason. Sometimes people, mashallah, they successfully drive you crazy. Yeah. Um, and then you have to let them know what's going on. But for the most part, I think a person of da'wah should be available to, to the people. Because they need you on, on in more than one occasion. You not do just like that you give them a talk WhatsApp, They can just WhatsApp you a question and uh, you answer? Or I, I, get, I get tens, maybe hundreds of questions every day from random numbers. And I, I'm in the habit of, I get a conversation, I, I get a question, I reply with a voice message, then I delete the conversation. Otherwise, my, my WhatsApp uh, thread will be this big. Um, and some of people have been contacting me for years. I have no idea who they are, what their names are, what they're what they're going about. Mm -hmm. I don't I don't connect them. Mm -hmm. yani. I don't obviously I'm not going to save people's number. Yeah. Uh, but yes, technically, whoever wants to have his question or, or advice for me or whatever, yeah, they can they can technically reach me. Good thing, man. I was uh, pretty hesitant to te uh, for texting you because I thought like so many people approach you, and then no, I, I can understand some people. I think you said it in one voice memo. They go like. Where do you work? What do you eat? What do you like? Which kebab do you like? I uh, know. Yeah, those those never happen on WhatsApp. Okay. Those are the Facebook yeah. people, man. The Facebook Messenger. You know, you <laughs> you accept the friend request innocently, and then next thing you know, uh, send me money. Uh, really? They send you a picture of, of him. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, that's uh, that's. I was very about common. to ask you for a new Samsung because I know you work there. Um, if I post a picture of a Samsung device, surely all the comments will be, "Where's my phone? Where's my free? Send me a free one." <laughs> And I always reply with my sarcastic reply. I said, where's my phone? I'm like, um, not with me. You know, just like, what do you want me to tell you? Uh, so, yeah, I give them, I try to give them some funny answers yeah. to uh, calm them down. But, you know, hey, hey, you know, everybody has a different personality and you have to be accommodating as much as you can. Yeah. So you do a lot of stuff to keep yourself down, actually, not, not get buried in the positive comments. Do you, have, do you have something like concrete you do to put yourself in place? Uh, I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, I look in the mirror and I know that I came from sperm, from a sperm drop and I look in the mirror I'm going to nice. rot. Nice, I'm sure. going to, yeah, exactly. I mean, who, who am I? Yeah. Um, and plus, I mean, as look, to be honest also, as, yeah, I mean, as much as I get the, the good comments that, you know, that, that make you feel good, it won't be long before someone mass mops the floor with me. Yeah. Um, and so I'm, anything I put out, I'm, I'm constantly getting... Uh, you know, conflicting opinions between extreme love and extreme hate. Yeah. Um, and so you, anytime you read a comment that makes you feel good about yourself, someone will surely make sure that you change your mood uh, moments after by just giving you a nasty comment. And they're like, good at it. Mm, uh, they know how to write. Yeah. Yeah, but they're the keyboard warriors, man. They went and graduated from the military so they can become keyboard warriors. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you don't care about the positive comments, I think you wouldn't care about the negative comments either. So I think that's one good advice to not care about the compliments as well too much, right? It's so difficult. Look, the compliments is easy not to care about. Mm -hmm. The difficult one is not to care about the nasty comments. Okay, um, give me one. Which I, one, which it, one it, did you hear, did, uh, heard a lot? 
Oh, a lot. A lot. The, the, the most common one is like, who's this kid? Oh, tell this kid I to shut up. Oh, yeah. Who's the, this kid? Oh, yeah. Well, this kid is your father's age, man. I actually realized that I turned 42, alhamdulillah, according Amen. to the Hijri calendar, brother. Uh, I was born in Safar 1400. We are now in Safar 1422 uh, mm -hmm. or 23. 22? 1442. Yeah, so I'm, I'm 42 years old. Uh, if you want to go by the Gregorian calendar, I'm 41 years old. Mm -hmm. Either way, I, I'm an old man. And so obviously you don't want to tell an old man you're a kid. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I always find it offensive, but I, I cannot I blame mean, like, them. You look young, uh, right? Good, right? I look young, yeah. What? I thought it was good until people started calling me a kid. Uh, and so that, def that defeats the purpose. You're supposed to feel good about yourself, not like, like um, when am I going to grow up? Um, but that's besides the point. Uh, it's really people that don't, the, the, I don't mind people leaving uh, constructive criticism. And people who do with respect, well, I, 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 I engage my audience myself for the most part. If you read my, yeah, the comment yeah, section, see that, yeah. you see that I'm replying. I reply to the people. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. My family does as well. May Allah bless them. Amen. But I try to engage them myself. So when someone leaves me a decent comment, even if I, I, they correct me, I stand corrected. If they tell me and uh, notify me about something, they bring it to my attention, I accept it. Um, the challenge is when someone talks nasty and I know that I can talk smack. Uh, and, you know, I have to hold myself back from saying so many things that I could say. Uh, that I don't want to say. That's the biggest challenge. Know, and so yeah, often I, I write a whole comment where I'm, I read, the, I write this nasty comment, then I read it again. I'm like, ah oh, man, that's bad. Ten percent. And then like I delete it. I'm supposed I write to be an example. One. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Then I write a nicer one, and I keep dumbing it down yeah. until it becomes like. Uh, sometimes I just write, thank you very much, or okay, or go sleep, or perfect. I try to be brief after writing a comment where I was like, ah, wah, 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 Oh, they're you know, writing a whole paragraph the and then you respond with three words. That's the biggest, uh, biggest comeback. I, I try to do that and they get mad. I know. They're like, oh yeah, so you don't have any respect for the people. So, blah, blah, blah. I say, okay, how can I win with you? Did I bring you by your neck to my channel and, and force you to watch? <laughs> okay, don't watch. Yeah, it's like, don't yeah, watch, okay, just don't I click. Have... They can't help it. No, they have to click and they have to give you a fatwa. And the, the most ironic thing in the dunya is that the person that is actually passing a judgment is criticizing you for passing a judgment. It's like you, me, you're not, a lot, you're not qualified to pass a judgment, but I'm go, me, the keyboard warrior, I, I'm qualified to pass a judgment on you. Mashallah. But what, what kind of hypocrisy is Mashallah. this? If, if, if you think I need to shut up, then you need to shut up too. If you think you're allowed to speak, then I'm allowed to speak too. And I mean, come on, you, you cannot be that silly and you cannot, how can that go over your head? Like, what are these double standards? If you think I'm wrong by speaking about Fulan, then you could be wrong by speaking about me. And you're actually wrong by speaking about me. If I'm not qualified, you're not qualified. If I'm not qualified, you're qualified. I mean, to me, SubhanAllah, I believe Allah gave humans enough intelligence to be able to figure that one out. But you'll be surprised how many people their intelligence fails them in figuring that one out. And they mop the floor with you and they disgrace you in the comment because supposedly you're not supposed to do this to another Muslim, but it's halal for them, haram for you. But I think you also have to consider a thing like, I have this as well, when I, when, I, when I see a YouTube comment, I expect the person to be like around my age. But it could also be a kid of 12 years old or 15 or, you know, it's... Maybe! Maybe so Allah you, you I mean, we, take it we, almost always that seriously because also you don't know like who, who's behind that desk, right? Behind that keyboard. Sahih. So, you know, take That's it a good advice. I, I, I'll take it on board and try to implement it, inshallah. Uh, so, yeah. Um, also, uh, you recently started doing homeschooling, which was very interesting for me to see. Um, uh, yeah, I started doing videos on homeschooling. Oh, yeah, As sorry, for homeschooling, sorry, yeah, yeah. Don't I, we, yeah, we've been you doing, doing videos about it, yeah. but you did it for a long time, right? Now nah, my children have been homeschooled from since birth, mm -hmm. mashallah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, how old is your, your Abu, for Abu, for Abu Musab, your oldest son? Abu Musab, Musab is 15 years old, mashallah, mashallah tabarakallah. So you're a very, you're a assistant, right, on YouTube? Uh, he's uh, the cameraman, he's the one who, with, along with my wife, but we're trying to train him so that he can manage 
technically the whole thing from A to Z. Mashallah. My wife is still the, uh, the manager mm -hmm. of, of any, every video related issue, but he is reaching a level where if we, if right now this, this uh, podcast, mm -hmm. we can technically leave it up to him mm -hmm. to do the whole thing. From, from the lighting, to the filming, to the editing, to the uploading, to the whole shebang. MashaAllah. May Allah bless your family, brother. Alhamdulillah. MashaAllah. Very Ameen, nice. Ya Rabbu, Iyakum, and all the Muslims. Ameen. Alhamdulillah. So, Allah, homeschooling is a big topic here in the West as well. But I think, not for the reasons mm. uh, you homeschool, I think. So I want to be clear on what is the reason you decided to do homeschooling instead of just going to public school. Hey, Barakallah Feek. I did homeschooling or I decided to do homeschooling because I worked in the educational field quite extensively. Really? Uh, um, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm a certified English language teacher. MashaAllah. Uh, and so uh, when I first moved to Saudi, that was my main work. I was working in schools. So I got to work in international schools. I got to work in uh, public schools, mm -hmm. local schools, mm -hmm. uh, Saudi schools, as they say. And I got to work as a supervisor uh, uh, in charge of other teachers in a school. And uh, my exposure to all of these environments uh, allowed me to reach the conclusion that the school, any school, for the most part, I can't think of an exception, is ultimately unhealthy for children. Unhealthy uh, in terms of their uh, association with other, other students mm -hmm. whom I don't know how their parents raised them. Uh, their exposure to teachers, which may be wicked, uh, evil, uh, deviants, uh, more than that, if you get what I'm saying. Uh, they have certain orientation, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, uh, so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. um, then lastly, unhealthy for my pocket, because schools were uh, expensive. And, you know, you got to pay an arm and a leg uh, to maintain it. And then what are they learning? What are they actually learning? It's really not that much, um, uh, you know, uh, it's basic stuff that you should be able to teach for the most part and or the amount of hours they spend in the school. So just think about it. Think about it. And I know this is shocking to many people, but go on, go on. your child whom you love so much, you're giving him away and leaving him in the hands of complete strangers that you don't know. Don't tell me that you know every teacher and what they do on their own in their own lifestyle. You're leaving your child for seven to eight hours, depending on your, the country you're in and how long the school day is, mm -hmm. in the hands of complete strangers. And it's not one, it's many. With many and you have no access, no information, no involvement, unless they have a t you know, parents meeting once in the semester where they come and say, hello, how are you? Ten are you minutes. doing good? Or oh, your son? <laughs> yeah. And so... I, I have a problem sending my child to a supermarket across the street to buy something without me, you know, supervising his well-being. Mm -hmm. uh, how am I going to send him to an environment where I have absolutely no control? I just can't. I couldn't fathom that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I, I feel that we have responsibility towards them. Mm -hmm. So if the whole thing is about education, is there an alternative for education? Yes. Oh, I forgot to mention. What do they learn in school? Every type of Zubala out there. They learn a lot of garbage besides what is good for them. They learn a lot of stuff that is not good for them, mm -hmm. especially in this day and time mm -hmm. where the LGBT, uh, you know, uh, subjects are being inserted uh, purposely mm -hmm. into the curriculum mm -hmm. so that they're, you know, starting to uh, prepare the children from a young age. Mm -hmm. Like, why would I expose my child to this kind of uh, environment? Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, what is it? Language? You know, you could bring the stuff home and you could teach them from home if you have a qualified uh, parent or if you can hire a teacher. And then uh, because homeschooling is so uh, flexible, they allow you to actually select what you want them to read about, what you want them to learn. Not everything is imposed on you. There are different styles of homeschooling. So you mean like in and mathematics they, and language or in other stuff? like? No, mathematics, there's no issue with that. Not like you're going to only learn subtraction and no addition. Like, it's not, not like that. And no, no, yeah. There you go. You know, math. When it comes to math, you got to learn a whole shebang. Okay, but when it comes to language, yeah. for example, if I want, I can select the type of books that I want my children to read. I don't want them to read a book about magic or a book about, you know, a thief or a book about whatever. Mm -hmm. I could select the kind of book. Sometimes in in certain homeschools, you can select Islamic books That's as long as they do what they need to do regarding the the book and reading it and, and writing a report or mm -hmm. a project about it, whatever, whatever. They get credit for that, and that is sufficient for the for the homeschooling. Uh, you know, school. 
uh, they, they accept that. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, that gives you a lot of room for you to invest into something more useful and beneficial than what the school offers. But you're also, and you save a lot you're of money. also working full time, right? Or is that, I'm not understanding it. I work full time at Samsung Electronics. Ahlan wa sahlan. Okay, I am okay. anti Apple to the core. Uh, me too, to the man. bone. Just bump it. I don't know if that works. Oh, oh, yeah, oh right. there's, sorry. <laughs> yeah. I was putting it on the uh, screen. I forgot the camera. I gotta admit, the camera of uh, Apple is better, man. For now. Ooh. It's the only thing. The Which only camera? Type, listen. I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna waste everybody's time. Go on Google mm -hmm. and type uh, camera or flagship phones or phones blind test. Mm -hmm. There are a number of websites mm -hmm. that they do what they call a blind test. A blind test is where they get all the all the flagship phones, the best phones that the companies make from Oppo, Xiaomi, Samsung, uh, Huawei, Apple, whatever, whatever, whatever. Mm -hmm. And they, they take pictures of the same objects, different in the scenery, natural scenery, bicycle, whatever, whatever. Mm -hmm. And they use all these different phones, but they don't label them with the phone. They label them as A, B, C, D. And then they put it on in a public poll for the people to vote for the best picture. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if my memory serves me well, never ever did a phone other than Samsung win the overall camera performance. Okay. So an Apple, for example, will win in one segment. Maybe it could be the low lighting picture, maybe the uh, autofocus portrait. Like there will be a challenge between a number of phones that are always top notch yeah. in, in certain aspects of, of uh, photography. But the overall camera performance, the selfie and the back cameras, the overall, it's always the Samsung flagship that wins. Okay. According to the blind test of people that may be hardcore uh, Apple fans, they hate Samsung to the core. Mm -hmm. But when they vote for the picture, they think that's the nicest one <laughs> because it's B yeah. and Samsung wins. Okay. So thank you for that one, Habibi, but that didn't fly with me. Okay, okay. I will look it up and I'll get back to you for that. <laughs> I'll yes. give you time to do that. Mashallah. So uh, let's get back to what we're talking about. What we're talking about homeschooling, right? So uh, you, how do you combine your work and homeschooling? Because I always think like when you do homeschooling, you're sitting at home with your children and you teach them, right? So how does it combine with that? Uh, well, yeah, there you go. Uh, good question because I do very little homeschooling being the bread winner. Is that what they call bread it? Winner. winner. Yeah, way winner. winner. So I don't know why I always think of wine. I'm sorry about that. Don't ever think that I bring wine into the house. I'm cutting that out uh, and putting it on YouTube. No, I'm just kidding. La, la. <laughs> okay, mafi mushkila. I will refute you the, the next day. Uh, being the breadwinner, <laughs> it's a great start for me and you. Uh, being the breadwinner, I, I don't actually have to do a lot of homeschooling. My, uh, my wife, may Allah bless her, is the one who handles all that. Yeah. I'm just an observer and a spectator. The manager. Uh, I do get involved, and in, yeah, I get involved on a, on in a limited sense. Mm -hmm. uh, and when when I did get involved, we decided to help uh, other Muslims, mm -hmm. and those are the videos that you've been seeing recently. Figured, hey, well, let's cover some Arabic language, some basic aqidah, some basic fiqh, yeah. uh, since these are the books that we already have. Mm -hmm. And in the meantime, you know, it will be the homeschooling with Baba, so that other people can also benefit from. So I invite you to not you, I mean, you're the people watching to subscribe to One Way to Paradise channel on YouTube. Yep. And there you could see the playlist of Homeschool with Baba, where you can get, uh, you know, you can learn a little stuff here and there and, and get familiar with homeschooling. So the argument here that they make is, uh, I will, I will uh, send my kid to Islamic school. Doesn't fly with you as well. Because you're in Saudi, right? Well, I, no, uh, I'm not going to say that. If, if the people are in the way, again, again, when I say homeschooling, I know that not everybody is capable. Mm -hmm. Not everybody, uh, you know, who, uh, not every parent is able to teach, or husband, or wife, or both mm -hmm. are capable of teaching. They themselves may not be uh, not. They're just not educators themselves. They're not. They're not teachers. They because you need to have certain skills. Um, so I, I'm not saying everybody should homeschool. Those who are capable should consider it. For the rest of us, then uh, Allah will not burden you. Allah does not burden the soul beyond the scope. Mm -hmm. Those are the people that have to fetch for the best school out there and try as much as possible to manage it. So if there's an Islamic school that is teaching proper Islam, mm -hmm. Alhamdulillah, it's a big blessing from Allah. Okay. So, uh, but you have to be wary all the time. You have to be careful all the time. Now, now nice. So well, suppose I want to homeschool. What are some challenges you would warn me about? Something like things I have to consider maybe. Uh, patience. If you don't have patience, quit from now. Because uh, the, 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 the parent becomes the, the teacher, the supervisor, the school principal, the 
the the the parent obviously they are the parent also uh -huh. so they ha they're wearing so many different hats mm -hmm. and the level of contact with the children is so massive and so continuous mm -hmm. that it drains both the parents and the children yeah. and of course everything has a disadvantage that's one of the disadvantages of homeschooling is that you know you reach a point where you say maybe they should go to school because they need, I need a break from them and I'm sure that they need a break from me you know and that's really a reality that you, <laughs> you have to face but uh, besides that yeah but yeah it's, it, it takes a lot of uh, a lot of patience man but for you, you have to it. be able to patience. endure yeah not me my wife oh, yeah, has the wife patience also, yes. I yeah. so is it like I will snap it, in is, no time is it like nine to three every day like do they wake up 9 a.m sit down la la ya sheikh that's what you don't know why do you think school is so long school is so long because they have all these uh, protocols and all these logistics and all this time wasting mm -hmm. element that they do on purpose to really drag the day as much as possible Stretched so the day. actual class is 45 minutes right yeah. the average class is 45 minutes to an hour yes. of which uh, I don't know how long goes for preparation mm -hmm. and da 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 the teacher come in the teacher leaving switching classes and then because the teacher has to manage minimum 20 students mm -hmm. on average mm -hmm. 20 to 25 depending on when I was teaching mm -hmm. uh, how much attention is each one getting right yeah so the child that needs the teacher's attention may not even get it throughout the class either he understands what's being explained on the board or he is in la la land homeschooling is like you're going face to face you're head to head with the person there's no escape so what takes 45 minutes in a, in a, a standard uh, classroom might take you 10 minutes in a homeschooling environment and there's no breaks there's no going from one classroom to another or from one subject to another or you take out the bag and you bring them everything is happening in one closed environment so technically within maybe two to three hours you can be done with your school day really and you have to follow some regulations right from the government uh you have to report something or how does that work the government has nothing to do with this. You have to uh, follow the regulation of the home school that you've uh, signed up with so uh -huh. you can get your transcripts and so you can get the grades for the child. Okay, uh, I thought it was like something you did completely independent from like... So you have a home school you sign up for and then you teach them... Oh yeah, ah, okay. well, because if you, if you were to only homeschool them and then they finish school, who knows? Uh, they, they go to university, they say, okay, show us your uh, you know, school paperwork. You're like... What school baby bring him a letter from your mom? <laughs> uh, you know, dear president, I am the mother. Uh, he's uh, educated. Thanks. And everybody's yeah. gonna accept it. So no, you you actually sign up for schools mm -hmm. like there's Clanlera, there's uh, Calvert. Mm -hmm. There are a number of schools, mm -hmm. and they they have different approaches. Mm -hmm. But let's just say some of them will give you a, a send you a box with all the books that you need, including teacher's book. And some of you will say, nah, just knock yourself out. You know, t t report to me what you're learning, what you're teaching, what you're doing, mm -hmm. and they will analyze it and they will give you credit. And when you reach the credit that you need, you'll get your tr transcript at the end of the year mm -hmm. and khalas. But yeah, you have to deal with an accredited entity yeah. so that the children will have their paperwork. So when they want to go to university, if ever, they can have something from a school. Okay, okay, interesting. So wh how do you um, deal with the social elements that they sort of miss? Because, I mean... For me, it's uh, when I think about high school, high school, I agree with a lot of stuff you say, but there's one big element, of course, that you have a great time with your friends. So, of course, you can do that, also do that when you're homeschooling, but how do you uh, make sure that he doesn't miss that element? Of Very good question. And I, I would say, first of all, that school ultimately is a great place for, so, for socializing, mm -hmm. but I also think that school is a place for over-socializing where the children are really being exposed to too many people with too many personalities and on daily basis that has an impact on them. And we both know, me and you and any, any sound uh, human being will agree that if you get I exposed to any person or anything, it will have an impact on you. Yes. Uh, you know, you spend time with a person who laughs a certain way, you start laughing a certain way. Or you speak with a person who uses certain terms and you will start using these so same terms. So your child is being exposed to all these different things and they're going to pick up from everybody and bring it back home. Um, and that's a lot of socializing for a child. Uh, on, and I don't think this is healthy. On the flip side, as you m rightly said, but again, you need to have friends. Mm -hmm. you, you, you're a social being. You need to be with people. You can't just be living at home your entire life. 100%. This is where the uh, job of the parents is to provide alternatives. 
So in my case, I enrolled my children in karate uh, where nobody was hit in the face, um, you know, because a hit in the face was not allowed. Uh, and so they did karate, they all became black belts. Uh, you know, we, we had them take, take swimming classes. Mm -hmm. And then the good, the good news is that there are many other homeschooling parents who are like us. And then we we connected, and then our children connected, and now our children have friends. Is it popular uh, in, uh, yeah, the, in your country, or is it not that popular yet? I live in Saudi Arabia. It's extremely popular here. Okay. I think uh, most of the Western families uh, that live here, unless they themselves teach in a school, and then they have like a special discount for the children, they bring children. A lot of them actually homeschool their kids. Mm -hmm. And this is in Saudi Arabia, where you would think that that's not really the the line, mode of thinking here uh, for foreigners. Uh, but that is the case. And then in the Western world, of course, anywhere you go, you will find a, a, a network of homeschooling families that, you know, are like minded. Mm -hmm. And once you connect with them, you can actually create extracurricular activities for your children to socialize with kids like them who are also being homeschooled. Mm -hmm. And they can do projects together and go to museums and go on field trips. And we've done that. You know, we would c come together once or twice a week or once a month on, in a park where all the families are there, the fathers are there, the mothers are there, the children are there. And we're doing all types of activities. And we're all homeschoolers. We don't send our kids to school. So we've created our own school. Yeah. Do you, uh, which is cool. Do you scan the kid before he, talk, who, before he socializes with your, with your son or is that a bit too much? Scan? Uh, no, no, because it's, uh, nothing happens except under our supervision. Okay, you're always... So we're... Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, they we're there. They're playing football. They're doing, you know, swinging, whatever. Mm -hmm. We're right there. Okay. okay. And so, we, and we, we assume, yani, of course, Akhi, we're very selective in terms of, of who we befriend. Mm -hmm. We look for practicing families that, that see things the way we see them. I, I'm, I, and because if I, if I don't agree with them, then it's a potential, you know, potential issue for me mm -hmm. and for my kids and for my family. Mm -hmm. So, no, we, we see people that we, you know, that agree with us and we agree with them and khalas, from that mo moment onwards you don't have to be so particular and so you know uh, sensitive about the issues okay interesting or the potential issues the thing i also wonder is uh, what do you think about um the university going to university to get a higher education is that something you you deem to have you think that is important to have uh, that no goes to university for no no no, not necessarily. I, I want my son to go to Medina University, inshallah ta'ala, or to an Islamic university. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, uh, in terms of his ordinary university where he's going to be mixing with the other gender, then absolutely not. Mm -hmm. Just like he learned uh, distance, he had distance learning for high school, he can have distance learning for university. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And what I, what I really think is a, a source of success, and you can see that I'm Lebanese, the Lebanese people are probably, some of them are the most educated people you will meet, seriously. The average Lebanese speaks three languages, French, mm -hmm. English, and Arabic. And, uh, you know, they have social skills and whatever. And uh, they can even get a job uh, wrapping sandwiches. Um, because uh, the degree is important, but what is more important sometimes is your skill. And, and you being able to cope into this world. Mm -hmm. And so, for my child, I would rather that he has a skill or uh, something that the world needs where he can get, uh, make money easily. Uh, rather than just going seeking this education on the expense of losing his religion or compromising his religion or whatever, only to get a degree at the end which is worth a bag of chips. Um, uh, so I don't want him to win the dunya, lose the akhirah. I want him to win in his terms of religion, and even if he doesn't succeed in terms of his education per se, uh, what matters is that he earns a living. And my son right now, because, for example, just to, to give you a practical example yeah. so people won't yeah. think I'm tripping, the world we're living in right now is in need of, of uh, videographers and video editing and da-da-da. There's a demand. Yeah. There's a huge demand and there's actually no supply. Not enough supply. So if, if he has those skills, he can technically get a job right now from home. Yeah, and I think and he's... And we almost got him a job. I mean, he's 15 years old or you started probably earlier, so he's a lot of experience. Or someone yeah, and, and that experience he, he learned on his own. He did everything at home with his mom. There was absolutely no exposure to anything outside. Mm -hmm. Kids are, in, in, in this modern day IT world we're living in, uh, they, they've become tech savvy enough to, to figure these things out on their own. Google so it. if my, my son is, is able to get a job right now, mm -hmm. exactly, Google is, is uh, YouTube, uh, everything is out there. Mm -hmm. If he's able to get a job right now mm -hmm. uh, and earn a living, and start off at this young age, and of course, with, with more experience, you will have, uh, you know, you will gain more need and make more money. 
why does he have to go and uh, get a, a, a degree that will waste uh, my money mm -hmm. and his money mm -hmm. and then at the end of the day it doesn't secure you a job necessarily we know a lot of people that have good jobs and pay a lot and they're not as educated as others who just don't know how to deal with the world i would rather that he has uh, life skills than he has you know just mere uh, degrees that you know he can flaunt in front of the people okay it's uh, very interesting to hear your opinion so barakallahu feek for that also very descriptive, nice examples, Allah. so the people understand what you mm. mean. Alhamdulillah. Sahih. Um, I think I want to conclude this uh, this yeah podcast. Um, that must be the longest podcast I've ever had. I don't know how long we've been doing this. Uh, let me check. One and a half hour. Don't check. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's because you're that interesting, mashallah, tabarakallah, that you've kept me engaged and energetic, even though I was super tired. But as me soon too, as man. I saw I this so microphone was... setup that you have, you, you caught me off guard and I'm all impressed right now. So inshallah, hopefully people will benefit from this. Bring it to me. Give me that closure. Akhi. Okay, closure. So we are a student association. We are at the university and we want to show the, the non-Muslim students what we're all about. How do you, you think you can give us some advice? We are a technical university. How to approach and maybe some tips we can implement in our dawah. Was that a question? Uh, Did I really uh, catch you off guard? No, not that you call me off guard. I, I just don't. I want to understand more so I can give you a, a, a useful answer. I don't understand exactly uh, what is your role and like w what are the accessible things to you. What is it? What are you thinking about so I can dig deeper? Yeah, I think the, we do uh, a lot of events where we talk. Uh, we try to uh, encourage people to uh, gain knowledge. I think that is one of the biggest uh, thing we, things we try to do is encourage encourage people to uh, attain knowledge. Uh, people you mean Muslims or non-Muslims? Muslims and uh, with that knowledge we hope that we uh, can properly um, explain to other people who don't know about Islam the true and the proper Islam. Okay. Okay. Uh, we try to host events. So, uh, so you have a you have a venue uh, on campus where you can you can make an event and invite people people come and, yeah. and hear you out yeah. correct? You can come okay. as well. Okay cool so Zakala khair hopefully inshallah. inshallah. So you you're asking what how can you make it better? Yeah, something like that, or maybe you have some general advice. I mean, you could also say, like, for example, like you said in the beginning, like it's basically just package it and tell it all. And don't, if you have a platform, don't try to cater for someone. Maybe that's a good advice. Mm, no, that may not apply. That, that may not apply mm -hmm. because I don't know the demographics or I don't know the the nature of your audience. Mm -hmm. What I would say is two two generic principles. The first uh, uh, of which is called the five Ps. Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't know if you know the five P's, uh, and it's not peas and carrots if you're hungry. Uh, the five P's are uh, proper preparation prevents poor performance. And okay, I, I thought you were talking about pillars, but uh, go on. Brother Ahmed. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, may Allah bless him. So proper preparation prevents poor performance. Mm -hmm. That is similar to what we discussed earlier. Yeah. Make sure that you prepare everything mm -hmm. to the best of your ability and that connects with the other idea or generic advice which is the fact that Allah Azza wa Jal expects of us to do ihsan in everything that we do reaching the level of excellence so once you've done all your homework all your preparation you've brought the right people mm -hmm. you've created the right environment the right flower uh, flower flyer uh, the right uh, uh, audi the audience have been catered for and prepared, then you share the message uh, of Islam with someone who's able to deliver it. The qualification of the presenter is important. Mm -hmm. Someone who's not going to succumb to the pressures and wind up giving some half-baked answers just to get it over with and please the people or because he's scared uh, of, of the non-Muslims so he's uh, apologetic. Don't bring in an, an apologetic Muslim who's going to feel bad that Islam is the way it is mm -hmm. and feels that, oh, I'm sorry, but this is what Islam teaches. No, uh, I'm sorry that you don't accept what Islam teaches. Yeah. That should be really his approach. Not that he's aggressive or he's not kind, but he's just straightforward. And, and that's it. And, and be regular. Have an agenda. Uh, so, you know, don't just uh, randomly sit down and have a cup of coffee. Oh, let's have a talk next week. No, no, have a long-term plan short-term plan Vision, follow yeah. and let the people read and i learned this from the brothers in malaysia maybe you've seen some of the videos habibi with the discover islam week in malaysia those brothers were were university students Akhi. 
Some of them are, are very young, 18, 19 years old. MashaAllah, tabarakallah, they had really, yani, it shows that if you prepare well, you can perform well. They managed with, with very small budget. Um, yani, uh, alhamdulillah, I've never taken, I've never received or never taken any money from them ever. Mm -hmm. uh, they just pay, pay for my, uh, my transportation and I'm not the type who charges money for da'wah. Uh, I, if, if I'm ever somewhere, I expect you to get me to you mm -hmm. uh, and cover that cost, but I don't want anything for me to, s to preach the deen of Allah. Mm -hmm. uh, but those brothers have managed to bring some of the biggest names in da'wah uh, to this Nottingham University in Malaysia and be able to manage it, I would say, rather well uh, and cater for a lot of the Muslims on campus and the non-Muslims. Mm -hmm. and, and those are people that are busy with their school, busy with their education, they're trying to make it. It's not like they're free. And they're using their own money uh, to, to cover the expenses. They're using their own money, which is ajeeb to me. So uh, they set an example for me of the potential that people can have mm -hmm. to do really a professional work. Yeah. And if they're able to do it, then you're able to do it. Then everybody's able to do it. We just have to do it. Yeah. And you think the reason is because of their systematic approach and their vision and just continuing uh, being doing often events and podcasts, for example? Yeah, they had no. They had a board. They have a board of people. They have consultants. Mm -hmm. They have people that they consult. Mm -hmm. um, they have uh, workshops that they do for the Muslims throughout the year. Then they have this Discover Islam Week, which is once a year, where they have to book a certain place and book venues and you know deal with the university uh, management. Mm -hmm. And they have so many different people pl playing different roles to make it happen. Mm -hmm. Uh, but yes, they do things on annual basis. So it's not this year they do it, the next year they don't. And that, khalas, the people got used to that this is part of the university. Um, mm -hmm. It's not an Islamic university, but the, 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 the students are aware of their existence and their presence. And therefore, they were able to communicate to the people in, this, in the manner. So they're always, in the, they're always in, on the scene. Don't disappear. Yeah. So that you're unknown. And so when you come and invite the people, say, what, what, who the heck is this? Yeah. What does this guy want? Yeah. You know? Yeah. They know that you exist. You're doing some sort of activity constantly that will make you... Uh, a present in the eyes of the people. Active social media, for example, as well. Very important, right? Uh, you know, but uh, each country yeah. has its own yeah. dynamics, uh, which you would know better than I would. Yeah. I think one important thing you also said is um, uh, have people on stage who have credentials. Do you think it's wrong for, an, for example, a student association to have a student speak about Islam? What is like the, the limit of somebody speaking about the religion? No, the limit is you speak about what you speak what you what you know about. You address the topics that you're able to address. Mm -hmm. And if if you're going to tell me that you don't have in a university a Muslim who can explain Islam, then we say we have a disaster because how is he a Muslim? Yeah. So yeah. you know when you come and discuss uh, matters uh, that are you know basic tawheed and worship of Allah alone and the uh, universality of the prophets and how they all you know. They were all guiding you to worship God mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and something very simple. And then you could say, I'm sorry, but the questions will be limited to the nature of the topic. Yeah, so yeah. if you have any question related to the topic, because I'm not the person who can answer any kind of misconception you may have. So you give them that disclaimer. So uh, maybe any one of you is able to give that talk and at least present Islam to them mm -hmm. uh, versus the, what they get from the media. And then they limit themselves even no Q&A or Q&A according to the subject. So that you don't have to, you know, wind up giving answers or being put on a spot that you cannot uh, address. And khalas, it's a piece of cake. Of course, the more qualified the person, the better. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, if you don't have access to these people, then the, the most knowledgeable of you can handle the job, inshallah. And be honest when you don't know the answer, just say, I don't know, and not try to come yeah, up with I, something. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah. Best thing in the world. I don't know. Good question. I will, I will ask someone who's more knowledgeable and come back to you. And you're creating a link with them to discuss matters in the future. Yeah. It's beautiful. Well, I think, uh, I think we're going to conclude it. I had a very nice talk, man. Uh, this, uh, it was very interesting. We, we touched a lot of topics as well. So, uh, very interesting. Um, yeah, my style you. of yeah. ping pong. Sorry? Yes. Yes. It's my style of playing ping pong. Where, you know, when you're playing ping pong, I have a ping pong table right next door. Yeah, I know. So you're, 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 you're not just standing in the middle, you're smashing from the right, from the left, you know, doing a spin. And that's, you know. I saw this one video of you with your, with your son. With like, my son, eh. Sorry, you're in this kid's good I'm not here to pamper this little kid. How is it going to be tough if I'm going to end up winning? Pamper this little kid? How is it gonna be tough if I'm gonna end up win? 
It, wallahi, it was unintentional. I remember some people have come and say, Ya fear Allah. That's how you treat it. You think I'm going to smack my son with a t t tennis, uh, table tennis ball on his face intentionally? It was a byproduct of my super skills. And you know, it's, he's not going to you know, break his nose. It's a table tennis ball, for God's sake. Just calm down. People love to... Uh, you know, you should just set an example. It's a, he was laughing. He was laughing for the longest time. He's the one who's like, let me see. Let me watch it, brother. Let me watch it. Mashallah. I said, I'm not only going to let you watch it. I'm going to let the whole world watch it. Mashallah. Khair, inshallah. Uh, I want to thank you for being here and taking your time to uh, do the podcast with us. I really My pleasure. appreciate it. My pleasure, Habibi. Inshallah, nice future future ahead as well. So, uh, I want also want to thank the watchers. Thank you for watching, and I think you watched as well. <laughs> okay, salam alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.